Hey, welcome back to another DIY with Jason. Today we're going to be talking about servicing an above ground hot tub, much like this one. Depending on your swim schedule and or swim seasons where you live, that may occur once or twice a year. Here in the Phoenix area, we tend to look at about twice a year draining these things. So today we're going to be working on draining, filling, and cleaning this hot tub. Follow along. Let's see if we can't make this an easy process. Let's take a look at what tools we need. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna need, probably less sunshine in your eyes and more in mine, is a set of safety glasses. I had to pay for these eyes to get LASIK a decade ago, and I wanna keep being able to use them. So something to keep the chemicals out, that's ideal. Start over here on the right. I'm going to be draining with this inch and a half hose into our sewer drain, and I'm gonna to need to get the cap off. So I've got these pliers here screwdriver so that I can attach the hose to my quarter horsepower submersible pump. You don't need a pump this large, but I have it so that I can drain the pool here later. Then you're gonna need an extension cord to get it powered on. Make sure you're plugging into a GFCI outlet so you stay alive. Once the water's out, we're gonna be scrubbing with an old car wash brush, liquid chlorine with a Home Depot sprayer, filling her back up and giving a simple test with a five-way test kit. Once we're full, lid's back on. We're gonna treat the lid with some 303 UV protectant and we'll be off and running. So you're not gonna need a pump to do this necessarily, unless you wanna do it faster. Most hot tubs come equipped with a drain on them. You can see the drain on this one. You just hook a garden hose up to it, crank it over to the left and let it drain. That's gonna take a while though. You saw that using the pump system was much faster. You choose though. How many times do you want to drain it? How often? You know, you'll figure it out. So we don't burn out our pump before we start the draining process. Make sure you know where your disconnect is. Shut off power to the system. Save yourself a lot of hassle later. So before I start draining, I always try to make sure that the outside is clean. That way, after I scrub the top down, I can set it to the side, it will dry out, and it'll be ready for the UV protectant once the whole process of draining and filling is completed. Now that the lid's clean, let's get it off and see how bad it is inside. Are you ready for the horror? Oh, well, maybe it's not so bad. This is about six weeks of not treating it. It does have a slightly uh, tinted hue to it, but it's not cloudy or foggy. Depending on where you live, you may or may not have a sewer clean out like I do. Um, Likewise, depending on what city you live in, you have to double check the regulations on how big a pump you can use and how much throughput your sewer system can take. My pump is good for this system. So to simplify things, I just have a clean out off of a sink that I chopped up from replacing a sink. While the pump's running, I'm gonna be using my liquid chlorine and my scrub brush mixed into my sprayer to push all the uh, debris and biofilm down the walls into the pool, into the pump, into the drain.
So I failed to mention earlier, uh, this fun little tool creates a uh, spray pattern to get in between the pleats of your filters and get those clean. So while the pump is running, we'll get the filters cleaned out. The only real problem with using the submersible pump is it needs to be submersed. So or submerged, I guess that's the word for it. You can see I have quite a bit of water and debris down at the bottom. And what you could do is you could use a shop vac or you could just scoop it out by hand. What I'm gonna do is I have another pump, a little 1 12th horsepower pump, and then I can drop the hose end in there and get everything sucked up that I can't get with the big pump. Now that we have everything cleaned out, skimmed out and wiped out, time to start filling. Guess all we do is wait. So you can see with a little bit of protectant on there, we had a nice shine to it. Clean the body all the way around and protect from that dangerously painful Phoenix sunshine. So after filling up the hot tub, I put some uh, chlorine in to start in my little floater. And now it's time that it's warmed up to do the test and make sure that uh, it's not going to burn our skin off. I like to use these little bottles from the test store. It helps me get right up to the line a little bit easier slightly more control. Leslie's will test your water for free and they'll test for all sorts of things that you can't test in the five-way test kit. So I like to mix keeping an eye on the pool or the hot tub with this and then going down and double checking my readings. So five drops for chlorine and five drops for our acidity. In the acidity check you put one drop of chlorine neutralizer in there so that you're just checking the acidity level. Then they provide you with this little white backer so that you can read your color. Give it a little mix. Throw the backer on there. Test both ways if you need to. You can see chlorine's on the nice high side which is good for the hot tub and our pH is pretty close to right where we want it which means tonight we get to relax again. I hope that this was a helpful tutorial for you so that maybe you can clean and change the water in your hot tub. Comment, like, subscribe, say what you'd like me to do down below for other projects. I've got lots of stuff lined up from office remodeling to car projects and everything in between. So stick around for more videos and thanks for watching. Have a great day.